It's been called the costliest natural disaster in North Carolina's history. And tonight, CBS 17 meteorologist Lance Blocker takes us back to Hurricane Helene. Uh, what made it so devastating and why the odds of this happening again are very low. Hurricane Helene wasn't just one of the strongest storms we've ever tracked. It was one of the most destructive because of how it interacted with another weather system in the wrong place at the worst possible time. To understand why the damage was so extreme, let's start with how it all began. Based off hurricane reconnaissance aircraft and satellite imagery, we've determined that it has acquired enough organization to be classified as a tropical storm, and with it, it gets the name Helene. By Friday, Helene had strengthened into a Category 1 hurricane. Then, over the next 24 hours, Helene rapidly intensified into a powerful Category 4 storm, reaching maximum sustained winds of over 140 miles per hour, fueled by extremely warm waters off the eastern Gulf. Helene then raced northward at over 20 miles per hour, steaming toward the Gulf Coast. At the same time, a stubborn upper-level low was drifting east across the southern U.S. The imperfect timing of both systems led to what many have called North Carolina's perfect storm. The problem wasn't just Helene's power. It was the combination of the upper-level low, which drew in flooding rains well in advance of Helene's arrival. And as Helene approached the Gulf Coast, it carried trillions of gallons of water with it. So the upper-level low, unfortunately, was in position to tap into Helene's moisture feed. It was like connecting a fire hose from Helene directly into the low, triggering over 30 hours of relentless tropical downpours, what meteorologists call a predecessor rain event. This primed the landscape for widespread floods by the time Helene finally passed by. In the end, at least 251 lives were lost during Helene, and the latest damage estimates for North Carolina exceed $75 billion. And now the question I heard repeatedly from residents of North Carolina when I was there just a few weeks ago, could this happen again, and could it repeat this hurricane season or over the next 10? Their concern is valid and deeply personal. So let's break this down. It hopefully provides some reassurance. Helene's setup was exceptionally rare. Had the upper level low been further east, Helene would have likely crossed over Florida and exited into the Atlantic. Or if the low had arrived just one day later, Helene would have tracked north and weakened over the Ohio Valley. In both cases, the torrential inland rainfall that occurred before Helene ever made landfall simply wouldn't have happened. And crucially, Helene would not have merged with the low in a way that produced even more devastating rainfall across the mountains. The heartbreaking truth is this. Helene was a once-in-a-generation storm that reshaped communities across western North Carolina. But here's the good news. A repeat of Helene is extraordinarily unlikely, not just as hurricane season, but likely for years, even decades to come. And that means that families in western North Carolina can focus on what's ahead with confidence, knowing that what happened in 2024 was the exception and not the rule. For CBS 17 News, I'm meteorologist Lance Blocker.